When Marion and I started Weissman Freddy Architecture, Landscape, and Urbanism, in that name was very much what we were interested in, which was to think very deeply about architecture and its relationship to a site. In much of our work, we're trying to create connections that never existed before, and that could be a community, that could be a landscape, or that could be a topography. The biggest challenge to Seattle was that from the city to the water, there's a 40-foot change of grade. However, that site's been divided not only once, but twice. First, by the highway, and the second, by the rail lines. And our first question was, how are we possibly going to find connections and still keep the magic of those disconnections? Could we think of it as one continuous park that wanders from the city to the water's edge and ultimately create an invented landform while simultaneously allowing all that infrastructure to exist. At Barnard College, there was a need to create almost 100,000 square feet for the Creative Arts Student Center. So what happens? One floor after another starts to create social segregation. What if, instead of just stacking everything up, art, architecture, dance, theater, if they get pulled apart and seen across and through each other, all of a sudden, the whole is greater than some of the parts. So parts of the building are more transparent to reveal the organization of the building. In much of our work, we're interested in architecture and nature and how those two respond to each other. So at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, we created a project that was overtly architectural and as we embedded it in the garden, we realized if we turn the roof into a green roof, it becomes the fifth facade of the building, creating an architecture that welcomes the city and dissolves into the garden in an effortless and seamless way. Rabbits, birds, insects, anything you wouldn't want in a building is thriving on the building. Well, the Women's Memorial was a competition to honor women who had defended the country since the Revolutionary War. And the site included a very, very strong, impenetrable neoclassical wall. And by the way, the competition rules said stay 10 feet to either side of the wall. Do not touch the wall. And as we thought about that, the whole idea of a freestanding building on the site made no sense. And the whole idea of a retaining wall that was a barrier just for the earth made no sense. And so it became important to actually break through that wall. We thought the metaphor of breaking through the wall was so powerful an idea that we placed the building underground behind the retaining wall. And then etched the women's words in the glass skylight to forever cast their stories in light and shadow. <laughs>